Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to just do another masking demo video today so you can get even more practice seeing how to determine when to mask and to actually get some practice with masking. I've got this case set up in Theta for air conduction and bone conduction masking, so let's go check it out. Okay, so when I take a look at this audiogram, the first thing that I'm noticing is that the right ear has poorer hearing than the left ear. So my better hearing ear is the left ear and there's something going on in the right. The patient's complaining, you know, right ear doesn't sound like it used to, muffled, not as, not as clear in the right ear. So the first thing I wanna check is air conduction masking. And you need to mask air conduction whenever the air conduction crossover could be audible by bone conduction in the non-test ear. So uh, we're gonna look at our worst hearing ear in the left and we're gonna say, um, we're gonna check every frequency. So at 250 Hertz, do I need to mask for air conduction? Well, if I played a 25 dBHL sound in the right ear by air conduction using super oral TDH headphones, um, we'd assume the interaural attenuation is 40 dB. So a 25 dBHL sound would lose 40 dB of energy as it crosses over to the non-test ear and it would be present by bone conduction at negative 15 in that ear. Can that can the left ear hear a negative 15 dBHL sound? No, it's below the threshold of hearing at that level. So we're not concerned about cross hearing affecting our threshold at 250 Hertz. Let's look at 500. A 20 dBHL sound would lose 40 dB of energy as it crosses over. So we're looking at a crossover sound of negative 20 dBHL by bone conduction in the non-test ear. Can the left ear hear a negative 20 dBHL sound by bone conduction? No, the threshold is 15 dBHL. So if the amount of crossover is negative 20, there's no way that that's going to be audible. There's no way that the left ear was playing a part in the threshold we got in the right ear at 500 Hertz. Looking at 1,000 hertz, we played the sound at 35, and now we're now we're getting to the interesting stuff because now the hearing loss is starting to slope down and get a little bit more uh, more severe. So we've got a 35 dBHL sound. So 35 dBHL is going to lose 40 dB interaural attenuation. It'll lose 40 dB as it crosses over from the right ear to the left ear, or from the test ear to the non-test ear. So we've got negative five dBHL of sound that's crossing over to the left ear. Is negative five audible at 1000 Hertz? Nope, not by bone conduction, not by air conduction. So there's no uh, need for masking at 1000 Hertz. Looking at 2000 Hertz, we're gonna say, we're, we played the threshold, or we found the threshold at 50 dBHL. That 50 dBHL sound in the right ear lost 40 dB HL of sound as it crossed over to the left ear and would have been heard at 10 dB HL. Is a 10 dB bone conduction sound audible to the left ear? No, the left ear bone conduction threshold is 20. And so at this point, we it's getting closer, but we're still not convinced. Uh, I don't think that the, the 50 dB sound at 2000 Hertz crossing over at 10 dB HL probably wasn't audible to the left ear, so we're not gonna need to mask. Looking at 3000 Hertz, we played the sound at 60 dB HL. At 60 dB HL, it's going to lose 40 dB of interaural attenuation and be heard as a 20 dB HL sound in the non-test ear. Ooh, now we're even really, we're, now we're getting really close. So 20 dB HL of crossover is that audible to the 3000 Hertz threshold by bone conduction? No, the threshold is 25. So this, even though it's close, the 20 dB of crossover is below the threshold of hearing by bone in the left ear. So again, we don't need to mask. Let's look at 4000, 6000, and 8000. 4000 Hertz, we played a 60 dB uh, intensity sound as well and so it's going to lose 40 dB of interaural attenuation as it crosses over to the non-test ear. It will cross over at 20 dB HL. Is 20 dB HL in the non-test ear audible? Yes. So at this point, the, the 60 dB HL sound at 4000 Hertz could have been heard by bone conduction in the non-test ear because the bone conduction threshold is the same level that we would assume the crossover to be. 
if a 60 dB sound loses 40 and crosses over at 20, that 20 dB crossover sound could be audible by bone conduction in the left ear. So let's go ahead and mask that frequency. I'm going to set up my starting level is going to be the air conduction threshold in the test ear. I'm going to turn on my masker here and the starting masker level is going to be the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear plus a 10 dB safety pad plus any occlusion effect. At high frequencies there is no measurable occlusion effect or if, if it is measurable it's very very small so we don't include it. So at this point I'm ready to start masking and I'll present my tone. I didn't get a response so I'm going to go ahead and increase my signal and I, I got a response from the patient. So now I'll increase my masker. Got a response, increase the masker again. Got a response, increase the masker again. And then I'm feeling comfortable. I'm gonna go ahead and save my threshold. One thing to always double check is after you're done masking, is my masker loud enough that it could be crossing over? And a 45 dBHL masker is going to cross over, it's going to lose 40 dB and be a 5 dB HL masker of crossover in the non test ear. Even if this is a truly conductive loss, the amount of masking crossing over is really, really low. So I'm not really concerned about over masking at this point. I just have to, th this is effective masking. So let's go ahead and move on to 6000 Hertz. I'm going to turn off my masker and get my level ready for comparison. So at 6,000 hertz, I'm presenting 65 dB HL of sound. It's going to lose 45 dB of energy as it crosses over to the non-test ear, and so that will be 25 dB of crossover. At 6,000 hertz, is 25 dB audible by bone conduction? Well, we didn't measure bone conduction for the 6,000 and 8,000 hertz because bone conduction signals are very uh, variable and unreliable at those higher frequencies. So we don't have bone conduction, but we can assume that there's sensory neural loss. If you look at all the other thresholds, they look pretty close to the air conduction and bone conduction. So we're gonna assume that the bone conduction score should be pretty close to this air conduction score. So if I have 65 dB, it's gonna lose 40 and cross over at 25. Is 25 dB of crossover possible to be heard by the non-test ear? It, it, it is. It's right at that threshold. So it's possible that when we played that 65 dB sound in the right ear, the patient was responding because they heard it in the left ear by bone conduction. So we need to mask. So we'll start at the air conduction threshold in the test ear. We'll turn our masker on at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear. We'll add our 10 dB safety pad and we'll add our occlusion effect, which is negligible and high frequency. So we won't add anything else. So then I'll start by presenting the tone. No response, I'll increase the signal. Got a response, I'll increase the masker. Signal. Oh, nope, I got a response there. Even when I increase the masker, see? Everybody makes mistakes. So I'll increase the masker. Keeps responding, increase the masker again. Okay, go ahead and save it. Double check to make sure I'm not over masking. 50 dB crossing over is going to cross over at 10. Is 10 audible by bone in the right ear? Nope, not. No, we wouldn't expect it to be. So we're not over masking here, which is good. All right, so turn off the masker. Let's go to 8000 Hertz and do the comparison. I'm playing a 60 dB HL tone. At 60 dB, it's going to reduce by 40 by interval attenuation and cross over at 20 dB HL of sound. My threshold is at 20 in the left ear, so that 60 dB HL sound in the right ear could have been the left ear responding by bone conduction. It might not be the true threshold, so we need to mask. I'm going to turn on my masker. The masker is going to start at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear at our 10 dB safety pad and the occlusion effect, which is zero for high frequencies. And I'll present the tone. Got a response right off the bat, so I'll increase the masker increase the masker and increase the masker. So in this case, the unmasked threshold was the same as the true threshold. And we can go ahead and just spot check ourselves here by turning on the true audiogram. And you see that nothing changed, but in the right, uh, right audiogram, nothing changes when I show the true audiogram versus the uh, audiogram that we're working on. So we're on the right track, we've finished masking and we've checked all the frequencies now. So we only needed to mask these 
three higher frequencies. At 4K, we needed a mask from an air to bone comparison. And at six and eight, we didn't have the bone conduction scores. So we uh, made a comparison between the two air conduction thresholds that we had to determine that we needed a mask. Now let's move on to bone conduction. This should be a little bit faster fewer frequencies to check you know so let's go let's start at 1000 hertz well no let's start at 500 hertz we started low and went high last time so um, switch our transducer over to the bone oscillator and uh, this is the threshold that we found the unmasked threshold at and what are our rules for when to mask with bone conduction we mask whenever there's a significant air bone gap so well, I guess really we should look at the better hearing ear. In the left ear, are there any instances where the air conduction threshold and the bone conduction thresholds are greater than 10 dB apart? And we don't see any significant air bone gaps here in the left ear, so we don't need to mask bone there. Let's look at 500 hertz in the right ear. We've got a bone score at 15 and an air threshold at 20. That's a 5 dB air bone gap, so that's not significant. Um, even if we mask this threshold, if we mask the threshold and it came up, it wouldn't change our diagnosis. We'd say that it's sensory neural hearing loss now, and even if we masked it and it came up to match perfectly, our diagnosis would still be sensory neural at that frequency. So um, we, we don't need to mask. We're okay there. Let's look at 1000 hertz. We've got our bone conduction threshold at 25 and our air conduction threshold at 35. And so the air bone gap here is 10 and that is not as considered a significant air bone gap, so we don't need to mask there. But moving on to 2000, uh, 2000 hertz, we've got our air conduction score at 50 and our bone conduction score at 20, so we do need to mask here. So and let's go ahead and set up our masking. We're gonna turn on our masker and we're gonna start in the test year by bone conduction at the 2000 thre hertz unmasked threshold and then we're going to put the masking in at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear, plus a 10 dB safety pad, plus the occlusion effect, which is gonna be zero in high frequencies. You know, I said zero in high frequencies for the air conduction too. Uh, the occlusion effect that you add for all frequencies for air, air conduction is zero. I just like to remind myself about the occlusion effect, uh, whether I'm testing air or bone conduction, so then my uh, equation is consistent, so anyway. That's just a fun fact. Here we go, we're at 2000 Hertz, uh, testing the frequency, uh, masking is turned on, we've got it at the right level, so we'll go ahead and present. And no response, so we're gonna increase our signal. No response, signal. Increase the masker. Signal. Masker. Signal. Masker. Signal, masker, masker, masker for the last time, and we got a response, so we're gonna go ahead and save that threshold. We can double check here to see if we might have been over masking. Our presentation level was 65. It would cross over at 25. Is there too much masking in that ear? No, the masking level is well below the threshold. We're feeling comfortable that we weren't over masking here. Turn off the masker and check the next frequency. Looks like we've got significant air bone gaps for three and 4,000 hertz, so we'll just go ahead and set up for the masking. Turn on our masker, set it to the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear, plus a 10 dB safety pad, plus the occlusion effect, which is gonna be zero for these high frequencies, and we'll start the plateau. We'll present, and no response, so we'll increase the signal. Increase the signal, got a response, so I turn up the masker. Turn up the signal, turn up the masker, turn up the signal, masker, signal, masker, signal, masker, masker, masker. Okay, I got three responses after turning up the masker 5 dB increments three times. So I'll go ahead and save that as my true threshold. I'm about the same level, so I'm not really concerned about overmasking at this point. So I'm feeling comfortable that I'm uh, doing okay. I'm not in a masking dilemma or any, any sort of problem. Uh, you can also check the masking dilemma at your starting masker level. I'll show you that at 4,000 Hertz. We'll turn off the masker, go over here, 
and uh, get set up for 4000 hertz. So I'll turn on my masker at the air conduction threshold in the non-test ear, add my 10 dB safety pad, add the occlusion effect, and I can just look right here. You know, I'm trying to play a sound at 20 dBHL. Is my masker loud enough to cover that sound up? I'm gonna play it at 30, it'll cross over at negative 10. Negative 10's way down here. The crossover masker is gonna be well below the signal I'm trying to hear. So I'm not really concerned about overmasking here. So, okay, let's do it. Um, I also want to point out at this point, you can do a little cheat where you say, man, I've got this huge air bone gap here. It's going to take forever if I go up in 5 dB steps. So you can kind of um, just cheat and go up in 10 dB steps to close the gap really, uh, really quickly and then switch to 5 dB steps when you get closer. This just saves you a bunch of time as you're doing the plateau. So we'll go ahead and do that this time. I've got my masker set up, I'll present. No response, so I'm gonna go up by 10. I get a response, so I increase the masker by 10. Signal by 10, masker by 10, signal by 10, masker by 10. And now that I'm closer, I'm gonna increase my signal in five dB steps until I get a response. And then I'm gonna go up with my masker in five dB steps. Masker, masker, masker. And I hope you can see that took way less time to just do those 10 dB steps until you get in the ballpark. Otherwise the plateau method takes a really, really long time. So there are these little tips and tricks you can use to, if you start seeing a pattern and you're closing the gap really quickly, you can just do bigger steps as you jump and that'll save you a couple, couple presentations and save you some time in your overall presentation. So. I hope that this was helpful to see a full example of an audiogram commit completed with air and bone conduction masking. Uh, I hope that you learned something new from watching this video and let me know in the comments what else you'd like to see and uh, we'll get it going. Good luck and keep on masking.